Come on, come on, we can do better than that. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands right where you are and begin to give God praise. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, I dare you to push beyond the way you feel even to you online. Come on, let's lift our hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, it's worship time in the sanctuary. It's worship time in the comfort of your own home. Hallelujah, we come for no other reason except but to give God the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the high praise that he is due. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, we can do a whole lot better than that. He's kept us, that's right. He's kept us all week long, hallelujah. He's kept us thus far in January of 2021. Hallelujah, it could be a different way. Hallelujah, but because the mercy of God, hallelujah, we are continuing until this day. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God dwells in the midst of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we shift this atmosphere with our praise this morning? Hallelujah. He's worthy. I said he's worthy. He's worthy. Nobody gets the glory. Nobody gets the honor. Nobody gets this praise. Hallelujah. I don't know what you come to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I came to lift him up. One more time. Can we stand to our feet? And corporately, together, in unity, give God the highest praise that you can give, that you can utter out of your mouth. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed, you ought to say so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord and greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. We are so glad that you chose to worship the Lord with us. These are our announcements for the week. Our Bible reading journey this week is the book of Deuteronomy, chapters 6 through 10. Let's continue to power up in the Word of God. We will be fasting this Wednesday from the hours of midnight to 4 p.m. If you would like to join us and have any questions about fasting, please contact us at 615-227-1012. Tune in this Wednesday at 7 p.m or our virtual Bible class with Bishop Boyd. Bible class will be live on both Facebook and YouTube. Everyone is invited to attend the My Help Heart Enriched Life Changing Prayer Service this Friday, January 29th at 7 to 8 p.m. You can also submit your prayer request by calling us at 615-227-1012 our prayer warriors are ready to pray with you and for you. Be sure to join us next week in Sunday School. Sunday School begins at 10.15 a.m. and ends at 11 a.m. followed by our morning worship service at 11.30 a.m. Next week's topic will be the lessons from Peter and Paul. Our scripture text will be Luke chapter 22 verses 31 through 32 and Acts chapter 9 verses 1 through 18. Now is a great time to click that share button and share this service with all of your family and friends. You never know whose life you may help to change. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Grace Apostolic Church Nashville so you never miss any of our services and to connect with this ministry. It's giving time. Here at Grace of Assault Church, we have three ways to give. Our Cash App, which is Cash Tag GAC Nashville. Or you can search for us, Grace of Assault Church, on the Giveify app. Or visit our website, www.gracechurchinc.org, and click on the Giving tab. We thank you all for your continual support. We pray that you all enjoy the rest of the service and have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Nothing
victorious, let me hear you make some noise. Come on, all the victorious people, all the shout hallelujah. Say in the name, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. Now if you know you got the victory, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, you all mine. Type it in the comments. Victory, 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 victory. Come on, put that in the atmosphere. Victory, victory, victory. Victory, victory, victory. I, I, I've got the victory. Come on, we moving in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Let's bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Let's bless, let's bless, let's bless him. Let's bless him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The name that's above every name. Hallelujah. The name that saves, the name that heals, the name that delivers and sets free. Praise him is coming singing. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My mind on this morning will bless the Lord. Feet will bless the Lord. Soul will bless the Lord. Mouth will bless the Lord. Hands will bless the Lord. Hearts will bless the Lord on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Magnify the Lord with me. Home the sun, he had the reading. Hey, clap your hands, rejoice and sing. You are Lord of them. Come your hands rejoice and sing. Clap your hands rejoice and sing. You are Lord, you are Lord. You are Lord. Yeah.
When I'm in my car, I will. When I'm in my car, I will. When I'm at my job, I will. When I'm at my computer, I will. Say, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. I wish somebody would clap those hands another time and give God great praise. That. Can we get about two more minutes of that, y'all? Can y'all do that again? I just want to know how many people other than sitting in the house of the Lord that will make a confession and a commitment that I will bless the Lord. Come on, somebody walk about Zion for a minute. Tell that neighbor, I'm going to bless the Lord. Lord, 
I believe, brothers and sisters, that's a good note for us to go into prayer to the Lord again. And there's a song, whatever key I need to be in, I need thee, oh, I need thee. Just a little bit of it, just a little bit. How many of y'all can say that? Not only will I bless the Lord, but I can, I can confess and admit I need the Lord. I need thee, oh, I need thee. When, Bishop? Every, somebody shout every, hour. There's not a moment of the day I can afford to be without the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, help me say, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour. Somebody tell the Lord every hour I need Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come. Here's what I'm going to do while I'm looking to him. Praise the name of Jesus. Everybody say praise the name of Jesus. Oh, he's my rock. Oh, yes, he Say praise the name of Jesus. Yeah, he's my rock. Say it again. He's my rock. 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 And he'll hold me up. He's my rock. He's my rock. He's my rock. And he's my fortress. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. He's my
Everybody lift your hand if you mean it. Say it one more time. Oh, bless me now, I say. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, again, we are grateful for the privilege of prayer at this moment. As you have blessed us to be here in your house today. Thank you that you already know what we have need of before we ask you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord, because you are the source of our help and the strength of our lives. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you, Jesus, for one more day. We want to praise you that you are our Heavenly Father. Thank you for your excellent greatness and power. We thank you, Lord, that you are our Savior. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Thank you for the privilege to come boldly before thy throne of grace that we may obtain mercy Glory to God, find grace to help us in the time of need. Lord God, you've been good, you've been faithful, you've been kind. We want to thank you, Lord, for how you have brought us down through the week. We thank you for you allowed us, Lord, to rise up this morning. You woke us up, gave us strength and use activity of our limbs. Hallelujah. You have been the replenisher of our strength. You have been even our healer. You've healed us. You've given the Lord strength and victory in the time of weakness. So many times you have solved our problems, fought our battles. Great God, you have delivered us from trouble. We want to praise you, Lord, for the knowledge you have unfolded revelation. We thank you, Lord God, for every blessing. We thank you for our homes and our families. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us. If we strive, Lord, from day to day with all the cares of life that we deal with, we know it is you. We realize and we recognize and we acknowledge you as the one that have taken good care of us is our provider, even our preserver, and even our protection. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And today, Lord, we ask at this moment, both in the house, those that are tuned in to this service today, that you would help us all to elevate our minds and lift up, oh God, our countenances. Help us, oh God, to have faith and confidence in you. Give us the strength and ability to cast every care upon you even right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, because your love is constant. Thank you because you never fail us. You have never forsaken us. We're thankful, Lord, for the gathering together of your people. You let the doors of your house be open today. You did it. Not us, Lord, and we praise and we honor you. Even to know that the earth is yours, the fullness thereof, the world of they that dwell therein. So, Lord God, as we move further in this service, Lord God, we pray for your help on the inside. Strengthen every mind and every heart, and especially to those that reach out to you today. We pray that you would feed the hungry, fill the thirsty, Lord, save such as should be saved and let your name be praised. Let your church be edified and your name be glorified. Lord, we thank you for the victory that we have in the name of Jesus. And even at this moment, we give you praise and we shall give you the praise, the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus. Everybody open up your mouth real loud and give God a big hand clap of praise. Lift up a voice of praise. Let the Lord know how much you appreciate him. Give God the glory. 
give God the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give God great praise. I wish we had time to praise the Lord. We're moving on in the service today. That's his holy name. Amen. See, if we had time to, to, to praise the Lord, then I would sing several songs, not one. And I would testify about several things, not one thing. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. We're moving on to end time. Thank God for all of you that are here. Those who visit with us today in the house, glad to see Deacon Freeland back in the house today. Thank God for all that God, watch this. Thank God for all that he continues to bring us. I wish I had enough people to give God praise. I wish I had enough people to give God praise. You know what? There's an old song that part of the words, I just want to mention the words of the song that said, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. And how would we know that how much of a healer God is, even COVID? Look at somebody and say, even COVID. How would I know that he's a healer if nobody ever got sick? How would I know how much power you have if I ain't never been weak? Lord have mercy. I feel like I feel like giving God praise. Amen. No, 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 no. Don't push me. <laughs> Cause some people want to go home. I, I I don't mind, but come on, we gotta give a little respect to time and all that. Come on, go with me to the word of the Lord here right now. I do. Praise is in me. It's in me. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I told you last week, I got to tell y'all again, whatever you want to happen, whatever you expect to happen, tell a neighbor there got to be an atmosphere for whatever you want to happen. Whatever you want to, to develop, watch this. Whatever you want to come up, it ain't just coming up without the right atmosphere. Why don't you let a little sunshine in? Why don't you let some of the raindrops of heaven fall down? Whoa. Shout hallelujah! I don't care. I wish people understood that God inhabits praise. Now, watch this, watch this. Not, not, not just noise. Not, not just noise. I'm talking about praise. I'm talking about when you think
This is what I'm talking about. Do you know you can literally change the situation by learning to just give God the praise? I dare somebody pull off the garment of heaviness lay it down I dare somebody to lay your heavy burden down right now you talking about an atmosphere for what you want to happen how many of y'all want some joy to come up how many of y'all want some peace to come up well I dare you to start giving God an atmosphere of praise water that ground around you open up your heart open up your mind and think of the goodness of Jesus Open up your mouth and give God the praise. Let's get in perspective. Let's get in perspective. Some people are sitting heavy because they don't raise the utility bills, but your income ain't raised. One question Has God still been taking care of you? Just one question. Somebody put a clap on that. Can somebody put a stomp of your feet on that? Can somebody give a shout? Atmosphere. He's still been taking care of me. Still been putting groceries. and pains that he hitting in your body here and there. Come on, come on. How many of y'all taking medication now and then? I'm talking about all of them that got side effects. And that's all of them. But how many of y'all know when you ain't even had the money to take care and to pay for your doctor's bill. How many of you know when the medication wasn't working? How many of y'all can give God praise that Jesus was working it out? Jesus was working it out. Come on and give him a praise. Come on, put your hands on it. Give 
Given the pandemic, given the world situation, how many of you can give God praise that God has given you some peace of mind somewhere in the midst of all the stress, somewhere in the midst of all the anxieties, somewhere in the midst of all your burden. Come on, give God a praise in the house. Somebody say, as much problem that we got going on, I ain't about to help the devil make me stop praising God. I ain't about to let the devil make me focus on what I ain't got. with me. I feel better when I praise you. I, I feel delivered when I praise you. Even though it's fiction, I feel like Superman when I praise the Lord. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I might look like a mere mortal. Look out, Brother Derek. I don't care what look like it got me 
manipul manipulated. I don't care what it looks like it's sitting on top of me. There's something about it. When I think about Jesus. Yeah. Well, the Gospel of John, chapter number five. Mm -hmm. Sister Parks, where you at out there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wish I had somebody. Y'all don't want to have no church. Somebody moan with me. Come on, Brown. I hear you over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I don't know what to say. I just need a moan. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I wish I had a church right here. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? In the fifth chapter of John, God bless you, everybody. God bless you. Chapter five and <laughs> praise the Lord. Somebody, somebody. Chapter five and verse number 14. Says, afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Turn over to the eighth chapter. We're going to read something almost similar. Verse 10 and 11. John chapter number 8. And it reads, When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Message from Jesus. Sin no more. Message from Jesus. Sin no more. God bless you. You may be seated. It is profound. These particular words of our text today. And let me, first of all, express my gratitude and praise, thanksgiving to God myself. I will submit to you that the awesomeness of God is of such. He works in mysterious ways and I often say that he is ahead of us. It is interesting, it is amazing it is even humbling to be a servant of the Lord Jesus. To learn to speak a word when he says speak a word. You see, this particular message today is not one that the Lord just gave me and he does that. Sometimes the Lord is spontaneous and sometimes the Lord gives a word in advance. What I've come to understand is God never wants us to become so routine or familiar with him that we don't allow him to be real. 
He doesn't want us to feel that we ever got him wrapped around us as much as he has us wrapped around him. He reveals himself over and over that he's God. He keeps himself and deals with his people in a way so as to keep a fresh relationship with the Lord. It was actually several months ago when the Lord gave me this message from Jesus, sin no more. Each week, as I am preparing for the ministry of the word of God in either teaching or preaching, I'm constantly seeking the Lord even when he gives me a message. Is it now? Is it time? This has been one of those that I have asked the Lord. I put it in the archives. As I often do when God gives me his word. And I would go to it in seeking to find out if the Lord was wanting me to speak this message or that message now. And the spirit of the Lord would say no. But in seeking the Lord further, the time has finally come that he said, preach this one now. This word that I gave you. These two situations that we have, and there are two. Can I talk to us just a few minutes and I won't be very long. Can I talk to you a few minutes? Message from Jesus, sin no more, twice. We read these particular words. One is to a man. Another one is to a woman. The first person that we read of in our text today is a man that had been lame for over 38 years. A man that had been crippled. We read in the fifth chapter, this man was laid daily at the pool of Bethesda. This man was brought to a place in Bethesda. Bethesda meaning house of mercy. In this area where this pool was, sick folk were brought of all kinds, impotent folk. People that had diseases and at a certain time of the year and season, an angel would come down and stir the water. The term used is trouble the water, but stir the water. The Bible said, whosoever first, F-I-R-S-T, step into the water, was made whole of whatever disease that they had. The unfortunate situation was, if you were not first, then you lost. It is so very, very important that we give attention to the setting of the text because what we discover is sometime in the natural order of things, we many times are left out because of where we are. Maybe we are not first in line as it relates to certain things that we desire to happen. As a matter of fact, much of what we desire and what we expect in life oftentimes is sometimes lost or we are withheld from it because of where we are in priority. In other words, sometimes we feel left out because other folks seem to be ahead of us. 
Sometimes we feel like some people are better than us or have more than what we have. Imagine this man going to this situation day by day and year after year, going with an expectation and an anticipation of being made better. Now, I hope you will hear the word of the Lord here. Just give me a few minutes. Because on the surface, it would look like that there was something lacking physically where this man is concerned, and it was. He couldn't walk. That's a serious situation. He's laid on a bed and had to be carried wherever he's trying to go. Jesus sees this man lying and saw that he had been left out and he wasn't the first one that made it in the pool during this particular season that Jesus comes by. When he sees the man left behind, so to speak, could I talk about it just a minute here? When he see the man, sees the man left behind, left out, not whole, not healed, not helped, he speaks a word to the man and challenges him with the question, Will thou be made whole? The man immediately responds back to the Lord based upon all of his knowledge and everything that he had come to understand about being at the pool of Bethesda. He said, well, I don't have nobody. I don't have no man. Every time I get ready to step in, somebody else always steps ahead of me. And I'm always left out. And if you let me paraphrase, the Lord said, I didn't ask you if you had anybody to help you. I didn't ask you whether or not you were first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth, or 20th in line. I asked you a question, and the question is, do you want to be made whole? Amen. In other words, the Lord was reprogramming the thinking, and, and may I submit here today, brothers and sisters, that when it comes to the delivering power of the Lord Jesus, we all have to reprogram our thinking. And understand that just because we have hang-ups, the Lord is not hung up because of our hang-ups. We feel that we are inadequate and we're not able to have or to do sometimes because of our limitations and or our restrictions that we have in life and if you allow me to say it, even when we compare ourselves, y'all want to preach honestly? Y'all want me to preach honestly? Sometimes when we compare ourselves to other people, we line ourselves up with other people and based upon where we feel like we are in line, we feel like that we can or we cannot. Amen. Amen. Am I telling the truth? Amen. The Lord said, I just want to know one thing. Will thou, will thou be made whole? The Lord gives the man a word of instruction and deliverance and says, as long as you can answer the question and you come up with the right response, then I want to give you a word of the deliverance. And the word of deliverance is rise. Take up thy bed and walk. The Bible said immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. The Bible adds this though. The same day was the Sabbath day. Now here comes another barrier. Because Jesus has just given the man a word of deliverance. Hear me, hear me very carefully here. He's just given the man a word of deliverance. Rise and take up your bed and walk. The Jews said unto the man that was cured, it is the Sabbath day. It's not law for you to carry your bed 
on the Sabbath day. It's another barrier. You know, the enemy has always got it fixed in his mind no matter what God has ordained for your deliverance. He got it fixed in his mind. He's either going to try to keep you from it or either he's going to try on a tail end to diminish the reality of your deliverance. The Bible tells us how that the Jews began to oppress this man. They began to challenge him when they said to him, it's the Sabbath day. It's not lawful. It's not right for you to carry your bed. In other words, they did not even focus on the man's being delivered. After 38 long years, they are now more concerned about what day it is. In other words, their focus is not on the man being delivered. Their focus is more on religions. And, and, and I believe, brothers and sisters, that the church must be awakened to the fact that God is more concerned about us being delivered than what day of the week it is. What good does it do for us to fix in our minds certain days of the week when we are not really being delivered? The main thing is regardless to what day it is of the week, the main thing is if I have a condition I have a situation and I need the delivering power of God. The main thing is that I get my deliverance. The man said, he that made me whole the same said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. Then they asked the man, who is it then that said this unto you? Now at this time, this particular lame man did not even know who Jesus was. And so the man is kind of caught in a vice, as it were, because he's made to feel guilty because it's the Sabbath day. These religious people are telling me that it's not lawful for me to take my bed and walk. The Bible tells us he that was healed didn't know who Jesus was. Jesus had conveyed himself away a multitude of people being in the place. But afterward, down to our text, Jesus finds this lame man in the house of God. Isn't that interesting? He finds the man in the house of God. Initially, the encounter that this lame man has was at the pool of Bethesda. He was in one of the porches. But now, after the man has been given the ability to walk, he is found in the temple. He's in a different location now because now the man is able to walk. The man is not left outside. The man is now brought on the inside. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus, when he finds the man, says, Behold, thou art made whole, praise the Lord. He said unto him, Thy faith hath made no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Is that all right? Amen. Sin no more. Now, this may sound a little bit strange, but I want to speak to you here about a message from Jesus that says sin no more. Now, what does sin have to do with the condition of the man? That's what's interesting here because this man's situation seems to be primarily centered upon his lame condition that he's had for 38 years, but what Jesus reveals here after he finds this man in the temple, he said, behold, you've been delivered, if you will. You've been made whole. 
But I want you to understand that, that there is something much worse than being crippled. There is something much worse than your physical condition. You wouldn't think that the Lord would say to this man, sin no more because there's nothing on the surface that shows the man had been sinning. But because he is dealing with Jesus, Jesus then begins to reveal himself. Mind you, this man did not know who Jesus was. All he knew is that somebody had given him the ability to walk. As far as the lame man knew, somebody had met my physical condition. But now, after the man's physical condition has been met, help me, Lord, uh, Jesus finds the man because of the Jews accusing him for carrying his bed. And the bed was not like a sort of mattress or a sleep mattress. It wasn't uh, any kind of memory foam mattress. Not beds like we knew. It was rather uh, a pallet-like bed. But uh, it was unlawful for anybody on the Sabbath day to work. So they considered anybody carrying a load to be a form of physical activity. Uh, this man then became hindered by religion. Praise God. Uh, because now it's not the right time for you to be carrying your bed. Well, what Jesus reveals here in verse 14 is I did not come here uh, to further religion on behalf of the human family. I did not come here to see how precise you are with the law. But I really came so that those that really are under the bondage of sin can be made free. Uh, so this becomes a moment of revelation, not just a moment of healing. Everybody shout moment of revelation. Jesus said, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. So the Lord tells him, You've had a condition that perhaps you've overlooked. You thought you've been physically hampered or hindered all of your life. Uh, but the Lord said, I want to address something that has lied dormant that really have never been addressed. Uh, so he says you're made whole but now I want to speak a word that goes deeper than your physicality. I want to tell you man sin no more uh, lest a worse thing than being lame come upon you. Now, this word is gospel because the Lord said as bad as being lame is, uh, sin is much worse than being physically lame. Uh, but I want to tell everybody under the sound of my voice uh, that the Lord often meets us in our physical, natural conditions uh, to bring about a spiritual revelation. Uh, it is not human nature to focus on the real issue of the human family. And the real issue of the human family is not whether a person is blind, deaf, or lame, but the real condition of men, of the human family, is the problem of sin. He does not even go as far as to tell this man 
that have just been made whole. Uh, he's not saying to the man uh, that you have never sinned. The fact that he says sin no more is a clear revelation that the Lord is acknowledging that the man has had a sinful life. <laughs> uh, but instead of condemning the man, the Lord is saying, I have helped you. I have stepped in at this point and time in your life. <laughs> and I'm using this time that I've stepped into your life to perform a miracle to bring you a revelation. <laughs> to tell you that you've got to stop top the way that you've been living to say sin no more come on help me shout sin no more it is a message from Jesus uh, that speaks of repentance uh, oh I'm not trying uh, to overlook the fact that you've made mistakes and that you have done wrong in your past. <laughs> but the gospel message of Jesus is I just don't want you to sin no more. <laughs> he said because just like I cured your lame condition, uh, if I can get you to stop sinning, <laughs> he said it will keep you from something much worse ever coming upon your life. Now, it is the Holy Ghost that has sent me here to tell everybody under the sound of my voice ha, that all of us ha, have to understand Jesus. Y'all help me preach right quick. I gotta get ready to close. Ha, look at your name and say, Jesus ha, is a miracle worker. Ha, but miracles ha, are not just designed ha, to just minister to our physical well-being. But the physical miracle ha, is designed to be an opportunity ha, for the Lord to step in ha, and to awaken our true selves, ha, which is our spiritual condition, ha, to make us aware ha, if I can heal your lame condition ha, then all I need you to do ha, is trust my word ha, that tells you ha, to sin no more because if I can get you ha, to stop sinning where you are right now ha, you think that being lame is a bad thing ha, but going to hell ha, and burning in the lake of fire ha, is much worse. Ha, look at your neighbor ha, and tell your neighbor, ha, said neighbor, ha, being sick is a bad thing, ha, but going to hell ha, is much worse. Ha, Jesus says to Dame, ha, sin no more. Ha, when I made a way ha, out of no way, ha, I wasn't just trying to do something ha, for your financial well-being. Ha, when I healed your body, ha, I wasn't trying to just do something ha, for your physical condition, ha, but I used it ha, as an occasion ha, to give you a revelation ha, that I, I am come, ha, that you might have life ha, and that you might have it ha, more abundantly. Ha. Give me five minutes now. Ha. Look at y'all looking at me. Y'all don't think I could do it? Ha. Check me. Ha. Uh, John chapter 8. Ha. We got a woman ha, that's taken in adultery. Ha. And this woman is caught ha, and she's brought ha, before Jesus. Jesus, ha, made to look guilty, ha, made to look bad. Ha, she's brought under condemnation ha, by the Jewish community. Ha, when they brought the woman to Jesus, ha, he stooped on the ground ha, and he started writing. Ha, 
and they began to talk to Jesus ha! and Jesus act like ha! he didn't even see them ha! I got news for y'all Jesus is not caught up ha! and distracted ha! by men's mistakes ha! Jesus act like ha! he didn't even hear them ha! and then ha! they came back to Jesus as if to say ha! did you hear what we said ha! this woman was caught in the very act ha! now look at this ha! that motive was wrong ha! on more than one account ha! first of all the woman ha! can not commit adultery ha! by herself ha! so the question bears to be asked ha! where was the man ha! because if they were honest ha! in their approach ha! the law required ha! that both of them ha! ought to be brought not one of them ha! but Jesus ha! knows the motive ha! of every human being ha! and how many of y'all are glad ha, that God don't deal with you ha, like a man deals with you ha. man is unjust ha, but God ha, is a just God God ha, is a just God ha. and so when they kept on ha, probing at Jesus ha, Jesus said he when he rose up ha, he that's without sin ha, uh, let him cast the first stone ha. one by one they started tipping out ha. and after they were all gone ha, Jesus looked at the woman ha. he rose up and said ha, woman where are your accusers ha. have no man condemned you ha. she said there ain't nobody around to condemn me ha. he said neither condemn not thee ha. he said go ha, and sin no more Ha! In other words, I'm done, y'all. In other words, ha! I'm not more concerned ha! about what's wrong. Ha! I'm concerned ha! as to whether or not ha! you are ready ha! to repent ha! as long ha! as you're ready ha! to stop ha! what you've been doing wrong. Ha! As long ha, as you're ready ha, for a brand new life, ha, I don't want to condemn you. Ha, I don't want you going around ha, with condemnation. Ha, you that's online ha, and anybody in the house, ha, the message ha, from Jesus ha, is a gospel message ha, that says sin ha, no more. Ha, I don't care ha, what you've done wrong. Ha, I don't care ha, about your mistake. Ha, just sin no more. Stand to your feet, everybody. Sin no more. It's a message from Jesus. And he is no respecter person. He speaks it to a man. He speaks it to a woman. He uses the occasion of a natural physical condition to bring a revelation in the man. But there's something much worse that can happen than you being broke. And you being physically sick. Are y'all hearing me? There's something much worse. I'm telling everybody under the sound of my voice. There's something much worse. And that is to allow sin to remain in your life. Because it will not only hinder you in this life. It will rob you of eternal life. That's the that's the dangerous thing. That's the worst thing. Sin is worse than sickness. Are y'all hearing that? I said sin is worse than sickness. Sin is worse than being broke. 
Sin is worse than having a lot of bills. Sin is worse than not having a lot of friends. Sin no more. That's the worst thing come upon you. Somebody in the house, everybody lift those hands up to the Lord right now. Let's thank God for the message from Jesus. The message from Jesus. I want you to open up your mouth now and let's give God praise for the, the message. It's a gospel. No, Jesus doesn't overlook the fact that we have sin. In fact, the Apostle Paul picks it up later and said, all have sin come short of the glory of God. The message from Jesus is just sin no more. He's just saying, surrender your old sinful life so that something much worse in the end does not happen. Woman, you've been an adulterer. But I'm not willing to hold your sin against you as long as you can make up your mind today with your encounter with me not to continue in sin. As long as you're willing to make a commitment to go and sin no more, then I will lift the condemnation of sin. Somebody shout hallelujah. What is anyone in the house here today that recognize I need to surrender my life to the Lord? And I thank God, I thank the Lord Jesus for the gospel. The gospel message it gives me an opportunity for a new start by telling me just sin no more. Somebody that may have had a life of sin, somebody that have erred, somebody that made mistakes in your past and your past have haunted you hear the message of the Lord Jesus that says sin no more whoever you are if you're a man if you're a woman boy or girl step out by faith come on to Jesus right now he offers eternal life if you never repented of your sin repentance involves a change of mind a change of heart a change of direction not only so Lord give you opportunity to repent of sin he will literally remit your sin you can be baptized today in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin according to Acts 2 and 38 and the Lord promises the Holy Ghost to all that obey him today spirit of the Lord to empower your life to live victoriously from sin in other words you'll be born again you can start all over again regardless of your sinful past if you're in the building today and you want a new start, you want to live a life free from sin in the power of the Lord Jesus, come on, step out now. We'll pray with you. We'll help you. You that are online here, you call in right now. We're standing by right now to answer your call to help you to begin that new start of a life free from sin. Call us. Information is right there on screen. Once again, anybody in the house that need the Lord here today, I made an error. I made a mistake. I want you to know the Lord loves you. He loves you so much that he gave us his gospel. Let us know. All I want is for you not to sin anymore. If you're willing to come to Jesus, he'll lift the condemnation of sin off of your life. Let you experience liberty by the power of the Spirit. I surrender That's all you gotta do is surrender to the Lord Jesus. I Today, make 
up in your mind and surrender to the Lord. I surrender. I surrender all. Oh, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. Come on, is there anybody in the house that needs prayer? visit us and viewed us online today. We certainly thank God for you. Amen. We pray that you will govern yourselves according to the announcements that were already given. Let us all stand. Amen. We're going to make ready to adjourn. Let us all stand in the house. Amen. Let us all say in Jesus' name. Amen. Consider yourselves dismissed.